Hi. Good morning. Morning. We're on lesson 260. Are you ready? Wow. 260. Thanks that for joining. That means we've only got 105 lessons left to go. That's right. No. Yeah. What are we going to do with our lives once we figure I have no idea. The, the question has crossed my mind. I said, God, what would you have me do next? I haven't gotten the answer yet, so stay tuned. We'll, we shall see. Yeah, it's going to feel weird. We're going to miss you, family. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'll just start watching our own videos next year. That's what I'm going to do. <laughs> okay. Lesson 260. Let me remember... God created me. Let me remember God created me. Are you sure? Pretty sure. Most days. <laughs> let me remember. I thought it was interesting these last three lessons are all let me remember. So obviously we already know and we're being we're asking for assistance to help us in just Dropping the defense, let, let me remember God created me. We know this. Okay. Here's the prayer. Father, I did not make myself, although in my insanity I thought I did. Yet, as your thought, I have not left my source, remaining part of what created me. Your son, my father, calls on you today. Let me remember you created me. Let me remember my identity and let my sinlessness arise again before Christ's vision through which I would look upon my brothers and myself today. Now is our source remembered, and therein we find our true identity at last. Holy indeed are we, because our source can know no sin. And we who are his sons are like each other and alike to him. I'm just going to read for fun the footnote on COA. It says, as this prayer makes clear, remembering that God created us is really about remembering what this implies about ourselves. It implies that our identity is set by God, that we did not shape our own identity through our thoughts and deeds, that we remain part of our source, that we are God's son, and that like our father, we are sinless. And just a reminder, I know we went through it yesterday, but if God knows no sin mm -hmm. and, and yet we choose guilt, in other words, we choose to blame somebody else or we choose to blame ourselves, mm -hmm. then we're choosing to alienate ourselves from God. Right. Because what we're saying is that, yeah, God knows no sin, but I do. <laughs> I do. And therefore, I am God's enemy. Yeah. And so he's is his son, right? And and you know, it's important to recognize that when we think, when we when we claim to think thoughts apart from God, yeah. when we will apart from God, thinking that we know best in it and we didn't wait on God. When we're doing things, even when we're doing things in the world that are not impelled or love's impulse, right? When we didn't stop and check in, because we are God's extension, when we try to veer off, that leads to guilt. Guilt leads to fear, right? And that's what kills the body off. Yeah, yeah. that's right, sis. Thanks for bringing that up. Mm -hmm. and. That was an insight I had a few years ago, which is every decision I make, every choice I make without mm -hmm. the presence and the and consulting Holy Spirit in my mind, the Holy Self, is made in guilt. Right. 
And guilt always attracts punishment. Yes. That's why the body seems to betray us, even though the body is completely neutral. Right. It cannot betray us. Right. But it seems to betray us. Because well, the mind experiences the guilt, which is then projected out on the body in self-attack. So sickness and aging and pain and, you know, and also other ways like lack uh, and isolation, uh, discord Fresh. relationships. Yeah. 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 And this is such a big one. You know, really all we're doing ultimately is closing the imaginary gap that we believe there is between us and God. And while we think that we're separate and we don't know God, we don't know ourselves. We have no idea, a recollection of our holy self. But the beautiful thing is, is that when you desire to know God, to draw close to God, God draws close to us. We receive his messages. We get these ideas. Clarity is there. Jesus is there. Our mighty companions are there. And we start to feel God. And the beautiful thing is you can make that connection that when you feel your source, God's love, the mind of God, the movement of God, we're always caught up in this um, experience, uh, physiological, but also emotional, spiritual. There's an uplift. You can't put it into words. But then in that moment, I and the Father are one. In that euphoria, in the grace and the love that you feel, you know I am that too. I must be that. He made me in his image and likeness. I express God. When I feel God, that's my identity. So far from mythical me and its limitations and mortality, the gap, right? So let's let us remember that God created us. And the more we know of God, the more we know of our self, capital S. And it's the truth about our brother. Well, it can't be different, right? It cannot. Yeah. Let me remember you created me. Let me remember my identity. Yeah. And really, I think the singular most powerful means by which to experience what you've just so eloquently uh, shared with us is, is through forgiveness. Yes. Genuine forgiveness. We're not forgiving other people. Right. We're forgiving ourselves, And it's not even us, not the ego, that does the forgiveness. Mm -hmm. I can't. Can you imagine? <laughs> oh, boy. It has its version of forgiveness. It's, you know, it's your, bro it's your brother's fault. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Someone's going to have to pay for this real sin. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh, you guys, thank you. Let me remember God created me. Anything else, sis, on this one? Well, I guess just the, the last little piece that I would add to that mm. is let me remember that, that God created me, but only God created me. There's no other... <laughs> There's nothing else that created me, only God, only love. Love created me. Yes. Okay. And it's so important, I think, particularly with this lesson today and every day, is to make a point to rest in that love that created us. We can't be different from our creator. It's impossible. And Love, love is the, is our being. Love is our being. That's it. So, I mean, how often during the day or the night do we rest in our being as love? I mean. Not often enough. No. And the practice of breathing into our being, that's mm -hmm. God breathing us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's love breathing us yeah that reminds me just of this is something we all must come to that whoever your so-called bio parents are you know um we need to eradicate the so-called mortal human history 
erase the thought that we've ever been born into matter. God is our source. God is the parent. God is the creator. God gave us life. It's not the life that we think of in a, in a body in the gap, which God doesn't know about and has never occurred because there is no separation. So that whole thing about expunging the, the <laughs> our mortal history. Mm. Yeah, who's your parent? Who's your creator? How are you created? By love, to extend love. Infinite, right. unlimited. <clears throat> and, 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 you know, undoing the ego's stories mm -hmm. about its past yes. involves the undoing of specialness, which is the mm -hmm. idea of a personal mind yeah. that can clash with other minds in a separate body, etc. All of that has to be undone. So the stories have to be undone. And right. one right. big thing in all of that is to that we need to come to the place where we recognize that our parents mm -hmm. are our brothers and sisters. Right. Our children are our, are our brothers and sisters. Mm -hmm. So the actual specialness roles of being a child Mm -hmm. ourself to parents and the role of playing parents to our children right. all of that has to go yeah yeah i've noticed a big um, resistance we want to heal and agree that mom and dad are our brothers and sisters but then ask a parent to recognize their child as their brother and sister and then it's like oh <laughs> There's, that's a big one in the ego dream, and that's okay. Um, but uh, it all has to go, right? <laughs> because well, God, God is the Father, and we're all that Son. <laughs> yeah. That's so true. You know, I mean, the ego is often personally insulted when, on our spiritual journey, we realize that we really have the ex felt experience, the knowing that our child or children are, mm -hmm. in fact our teachers right yeah and that we're the child mm -hmm. in many respects yes i'm going through that with my so-called daughter now yeah really yeah. i went through that with my daughter as well she was yeah. a huge teacher in that it just uh yeah it's yeah. a big one the undoing of the family special relationships mm -hmm. yeah that thought that you have to know more because you're the parent not allowing the one that you call a child to teach you takes humility in the world that's just like i don't know and being open to really see and hear the one that you call your your daughter your son and and you'll be amazed at what they'll teach you when you give them permission to because you've forgiven the this dynamic some hierarchy right Yes, this I remember when I was, I think, uh, I don't know what age I was, but when my daughter was mm -hmm. probably about eight, seven, eight years old, which is mm -hmm. fairly young in the dream. Sure, yeah. yeah. And, of course, I was, I hit one of those uh, ego undoing eye, eyes of the needle experience mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and was emotionally distraught on my knees, I remember that day very clearly, crying, sobbing. And she was standing next to me quite a bit taller because she was standing up, I was on my knees. And she put her hand on my head and it felt like Jesus put his hand on my head in that moment. It, it stopped me, it yeah. cracked me open completely. I totally cracked me open to receive the blessing that she was giving me. And once I kind of regained a little bit of composure, she got down on her knees, looked me in the eyes, and she said to me, you know the answer. Wow. <laughs> wow. And it was the Christ looking yeah. at me. <laughs> you know the answer. This is a, a seven or eight-year-old, right? Mm -hmm. And there was a, a spiritual transmission mm -hmm. that occurred in that moment where I got the answer. Yeah. The Christ in her gave me the answer and pulled me through that spiritual eye of the needle. It was just incredible, absolutely wow. incredible. And if I ever doubted it, um, 
she gave me some little drawings over that next week uh -huh. that, that depicted the answer. And, the, and so I'll just let you know, I was in agony over, I was being called to go to the United States by Holy Spirit, Jesus. And I, and I also had a family, mm -hmm. right? So mm -hmm. I, you can't just get up and leave your family and go do what Holy Spirit asks you to do, right? right. Well, my daughter said, you know the answer. Yeah. Wow. Right. Your priority, is your priority to God's calling mm -hmm. or is your priority that your allegiance to your human family? Yeah. That's what she was showing me. And I was like, oh, my Lord, okay. I mean, look at that wisdom. That's the Christ. Now, the Christ in her couldn't have shown up if I still had some uh, false idea that right. I was the parent and that she was the child and I was the teacher. Exactly. And she was the student, right? Yeah. Yeah, what do you know? You're only seven. Well, right, exactly. Yeah. And and while we take that human role of a parent, we're unteachable. Mm -hmm. We don't trust our children right. to be the Christ and to be the teacher to us, for us. Yeah, huge experience. <laughs> Thank you so much for sharing that and putting it in a context so we can really grab it. But yeah, that's how we would limit a holy instant, miracles, um, healing, right? Just by these roles. It's, it's by, not just by the, yes, by the roles, but, mm -hmm. you know, I'm pulling this apart here mm -hmm. and going into, as a parent, how reluctant are we to be entirely available to the child? Meaning how reluctant are we to really be um, defenseless with our children? And, and to be totally emotionally vulnerable. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because the ego parent says, whoa, we can't be emotionally vulnerable in front of our children. Mm -mm. We right. can't. Yeah? Yeah, sign of weakness or that you don't know or it's embarrassment to the ego. And yeah, yeah I can really see all of that. Yeah. yeah. A fear to say I was wrong, I'm sorry to a child. Yeah. Well, my daughter taught me how to do all of that. Yeah. What a powerful and, teacher. Yeah. 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 Beautiful. Yes, it is. I'm grateful. And, and the gift that I gave to her, because I was willing to be emotionally vulnerable, because I was willing to put my hand up to her at seven or eight years old and say to her, I know I seem to be the parent, but it doesn't mean I know more than you. Mm -hmm. You may know more than me. Yeah. All right. And I'm reaching to you, the Christ in you, to share that knowledge with me. Mm -hmm. um, that was teaching her to have trust in herself. Yeah. Oh, big time. Not to abandon herself, mm -hmm. to trust her own inner knowing at whatever age. Yeah. Oh, I love it. Yeah. Thanks, sis. Thank you. Oh, did we go off good. track? Did we no. go off track with this lesson? I know where. No, because I mean, if, if we remember that God created me, we remember that God created our the, the ones we call our children. No such thing. Yeah. Right. Right. It's stretching some people in the audience right now. That's okay, guys. It's... <laughs> Can you feel how loving it is to allow somebody to trust, to call the Christ out in them and not cap their knowing, their inner knowing, their light, uh, your ability to join based on so-called differences in age and body and roles that, that the ego has assigned? I mean, it's how freeing and how loving that really is. Con totally contrary to the ego thought system. Okay, so another thing's just come in just when uh -oh. I... Uh -oh. Okay. Okay, let's do it. Yeah. <laughs> is this, okay? So the lesson is let me remember God created me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Which means that in when we when we advance in this process of of the transfer of trust from fear to love, um 
let me remember that God created me is going to morph into let me remember that all my brothers and sisters are as God created them. Yes. Okay. Yes. So in the beginning of the journey, mm. we start out usually in isolation because we don't have significant uh, holy relationships yet because we're not ready for them at that stage. Mm -hmm. And so we do believe, and it's a necessary part of the process, we do believe that we need to listen internally to Holy Spirit. And it's all helpful, mm -hmm. right? But one thing that you and I have noticed, mm -hmm. which is absolutely profound, is that as our trust advances from fear to love, or should I say from fear to love that way, right? Um, the Holy Spirit is found and heard in our brother. Mm -hmm. Yes. He, he or she becomes the strongest voice for Holy Spirit. Right. Because the Holy Spirit makes its home in the relationship. And so you go to the relationship and trust your brother that what is being spoken, right, is the voice for Holy Spirit. So in many respects, it's the Christ that's speaking to us. Mm -hmm. As we forgive, learn to forgive truly, yes. Christ comes forward in our brothers and sisters and speaks to us because we're more available by then. Mm -hmm. we've, we've largely undone the personal mythical identity and we're showing up mm -hmm. authentically, vulnerably, with accountability. We're radically self-honest. We're yeah. trusting yeah. yeah, we've got gratitude daily. Mm -hmm. And so therefore, we're an open vessel mm -hmm. for our brothers and sisters to extend the gift of Christ. Yeah. Yeah. Because we're extending the gifts, the right. gifts of Christ. And you, and you will feel it, you'll know the difference between when it's ego versus the Christ, but you can go to the one that's as close to, as your uh, brother or sister to receive that. When you ask, yeah. Thanks, sis. Yeah. Hmm. <sighs> Good. Good. That was a lot for a short little lesson. Isn't it? <laughs> yeah, no, thank you so much for that example. I know that that's the, really the most helpful way we can be by putting it into a, a, a user-friendly example for the listeners. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, sis. And thank you, beautiful family, for staying with us. Yeah. Um, so let me remember, God created me. Yes. Thanks, Bye. family. Thank we'll you. We'll see you next time. Bye.